Well, good morning to you. I pray that you are being blessed. I know that I am. I'm Dr. Cynthia Morris. I want to welcome you to Family Dominion Ministries. We're helping to equip families to take dominion over all the works of the enemy. I really hope that you're quoting uh, that phrase, our motto over your family, because you really are an overcomer. God has created you to be an overcomer, amen? So we are talking about bringing our thoughts, our words, and our actions into submission to the will of God, amen? And I tell you, I don't just teach this. I also, I really strive to walk out the things that I teach. Matter of fact, you know, people that are in ministry, we're held to a much higher standard. Uh, the folks that are in the fivefold ministries, we're held to a much higher standard. <clears throat> and so it's my desire as well uh, to live this out in my own life. I've become acutely aware of the importance of the words I speak, of the thoughts I have, of the things that I do, and not just the things that impact me and my family, but how it will impact the people around me. Amen. Because you're not just, you know, an, uh, uh, just living like you know, living all into yourself and and you and just your family and no one else really matters. God created you to have an impact on your family and then other people that He brings into your sphere of influence. Amen. So I'm always aware of that, and I hope that you are too. So turn your Bibles over, if you will, to Hebrews chapter four, verse twelve. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, and I want to encourage you real quickly as you turn it in your Bibles to that to the New Testament again, that's in the New Testament. Uh, to uh, pray about becoming a part of the Gideon 300 army. We, we need, we're believing here at KPLE for God to raise up at least 300 people, partners, that will partner with KPLE, um, give it $25 a month uh, to meet a specific financial need to keep this program or this station rather, excuse me, this station on the air. And of course, if the station is on the air, all the programs, including mine, will have a place where we can go to be able to preach the Word of God, to teach the Word of God, uh, to, uh, so the people that are listening can be set free, so their lives and families can be transformed. Uh, so they're believing for God to raise up 300 people to give $25 a month, uh, and you can do that in any number of ways. You can drop it off here at the station, you can go online, you can do a, a pay online, you can mail it in, whatever you want to do, and you can give more than $25. Uh, so, and for all of you people who have given, I just want to say this real quickly, for the people that have sown and you're doing so faithfully, God bless you. God is going to give you seed to sow and bread to eat. I am telling you right now, when you give to God's work in His house, God will take care of your house. That's just a principle. The Bible tells us over in Genesis, as long as there is, uh, as long as the earth remains, there will always be seed time and harvest. So you're going to get, you're not just giving here and getting nothing back for your giving. God's going to give back to you. And not just monetarily, it's going to come back in ways where your families will be blessed or you'll be getting those promotions at work. And it's not that you're buying some miracle, but it just opens up the windows uh, of heaven so the blessings can come out. God wants to bless you. He wants to bless your family, but he wants us to make sure that we are also blessing his family. Amen. It's not just about your family getting your needs met, but it's about the family of God and about trying to take what we have in the body and reach the rest of this world because we have a huge responsibility, the Great Commission, uh, to get the word out, to preach the gospel to every creature. You know? And so it, it takes people and it takes money to do that. So God bless you for giving. Thank you pastors for partnering with KPLE and for encouraging your congregation to, to, to do likewise. May your church body grow and flourish because of the generosity of your heart as well. So God bless you as, as you I've mentioned many times before, my dad was a pastor. I love the local church. I love pastors. I believe in the local church. So God bless you for what you're doing. And may every need that you have be met in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Church of the Month is Destiny World Outreach Center, Pastor Chad and Marla Rowe. Please go to church this Sunday. You need to be in church. If you've been out of church because you've been hurt, Trust me and stuff, you know, we're, I know this sounds like a bumper sticker and it is. Hey, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're not perfect. We're just forgiven as Christians. That's really true. We're not perfect. I'm sure before long, somebody might say or do something to hurt you again, but you cannot afford, and I'm not trying to be critical or judgmental. You can't afford to sit this one out. You really need to get in a church. I really feel so strongly in my spirit being prompted by the Holy Ghost to plead to the people of God. If you've been sitting this one out, get back in the game, get back in the church and let God put you where he wants you to be. He knows best. God didn't dismiss church and, and no one else can either. You need the local church 
You need the body of Christ and they need you. Amen. They have something you need and you have something that, uh, and, uh, and, and, and it, excuse me, it's mutually beneficial. They have something that you need and, 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 uh, and you have something that, 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 that they need. So each one of you are giving to the other. Ultimately, it's stuff, you know, for, for, for God's glory and for the good, for the good of the church, for the good of the world, for the good of the harvest that's yet to be reaped. Amen. So please go to church where God wants you to be. Uh, if you're new to the area or if you just stop going, period, please get back into church. Amen. Don't know why I'm saying it. I'm sure it's just the Lord. But please be obedient and do it and be blessed because of your obedience. I know that you will. OK, so, Father, I thank you. Thank you, God, for your local body. Thank you for your people. Thank you, Lord God, for the body of Christ. Oh, God, I thank you that I am so honored and privileged to be a part of the, your body. Father, I don't know where I'd be if it was not for you, if it were not for the plan of redemption, not for Jesus Christ, for your son, for that sacrifice that you made. Not just for me, God, but for every person watching, even those that are not. So, Lord, help us, Father God, to in, in this country, Father, within your body, to value, to appreciate all that you've done. Help us to be greater givers, God, to sow more into the work of the, of the, of the ministry so we're able to take and to get this gospel out. And help us to take this word, Father, so we're able to build up our families, not just for our own good, not just so we can have just better families or more money as or better jobs, and none of those things are bad, but so we can be effective, sir, for you and touch other people out there with similar struggles. There is no sin, there is no type of situation that is uncommon, but all of us have experienced those things and we can give out of the abundance that you've given us to those, Father, that are still in lack. So thank you, God, we praise you, we glorify you, we honor you uh, for everything that you have done and are doing. And Father, I thank you for opening up the hearts of your people to receive what you have for them this morning. And Father, I submit myself to you as well. In Jesus' name, sir, I pray, amen. Amen. So with the little bit of time that we have left, I'll try to get through as much as I can. Um, and again, we're talking about uh, words, thoughts, and actions. So we're focusing more on thoughts, amen, and how we're to submit our thoughts to the word, to the, to the will and the word of God. And submission, again, as we talked about earlier, it's an attitude and it's an action. Get that. I really want you to internalize that. It's an attitude. It's an action. You know, I mean, you can, you can do something, but your heart is not in it. So that means that you got a bad attitude. Or you can have a good attitude and not do it. And both of those and stuff are really like non-starters. Your attitude's got to be right, and the actions have to correspond with the attitude. And God wants you to submit. He wants you to give yourself completely to him. Total submission. Put up, the, put up that, that white flag of surrender. God, I surrender. I submit to you. Everything about me, my tongue, my words, my thoughts, my actions. I want to be more like Christ. I want to walk, walk like he did. I want to be what your word says, not just so my family can be blessed, God, but so I, Father God, can bring honor to the, to the kingdom of God, not reproach unto you. We represent God in this world. We are his ambassadors. The world is looking at us. And that's why we have to really diligently seek to follow after God and have God's character and nature demonstrated in who we are, in what we do, in our thoughts, and in our actions, and all of that, because people are watching, amen? Not just heaven, heaven's watching, God's watching, but there are people out there that are watching that could potentially be touched by the gospel, amen? That's really the ultimate, the, the, the ultimate in this, is that it's all about winning souls. That's really what it's all about. It's not about the big cars or the big houses, you know, or becoming a billionaire or a millionaire. Or, and I'm not saying that people can't have money, can't have houses, can't have cars, but it's all about saving souls. That's what it really comes down to, that everything I have, everything I am, all that I'm doing, trying to be more like Christ is all about trying to get people into the kingdom. Amen? So anyway, so as believers, you know, we must think the way that God thinks. How many people just want to have the mind of Christ? I do. I want to think like God thinks because God is way smarter than I could ever, ever want to be. Amen. Way smarter. You know, so when whenever we spend time in God's word and presence, it will change the way that we think. If you're not, if your thought life is not in alignment with, with the word of God, you're probably not spending enough time in the word. You're not spending enough time in God's presence, worshiping him, talking to him, allowing that word to really saturate you 
your, your mind. You, some, sometimes we just need to like just take some spiritual soap and just clean our minds out. I tell you, you can get really dingy and dirty in this world we live in because it is a cesspool. And you have got to really keep your mind clean. You know, because there's so much things out there that are designed to pull you down, to destroy you. You know, but our thoughts, our words, our actions will reflect or should reflect rather the heart of God. If we're spending time with him in his word and in his presence, those things will reflect him. People will literally see Christ in us. Let me read a couple of scriptures to you. Hebrews 4.12 is one. Also, I can get through a few of these. It states that for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and there's a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. Remember now, mind, will, emotions. That's what your soulless realm is. So God is able to discern our thoughts and our intentions and to show us what's good and what's bad, what's right and what's wrong, and what we, what we need to do to bring those things and him in us, through us, to bring those things back into alignment. Philippians 5, uh, 2, 5 says, I love this scripture. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. God, give me the mind of Christ. Have you ever prayed that before? God, give me, give me Jesus' mind. Father, I want your thoughts to be my thoughts. Proverbs 16 to 3 states, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Everything going back to Lord, it's all about you, all about you. Then God will cause everything else in our lives to be in alignment with, with him, with his, with his word, with his will. Psalm 1, uh, 1959 states, I thought about my ways, reflected on my ways, and turned my feet to your testimony. Sometimes we have to look at where we are in our filthiness, and you know, God will open up our eyes, and he'll show us how bad off we really are. And sometimes, guys, we're in bad shape, and God pulls the blinders off, and we see the rut that we're in. And God is saying, you know, you need to really uh, change what you're doing. I didn't create you for this. I created you for something better, better than where you are. You don't have to stay in a pig pen. You can come up into the palace, but you're going to stay right down there because of what you're saying, what you're thinking, and what you're doing. They have you captive, you're snared, and you're caught up in your sin. Amen? So, Father, and we just thank you in Jesus' name, Father God, for your, I, I just thank you daily for the plan of redemption. I thank you, God, that you made a way out. You gave us an exit out of sin. Father, you gave us an exit out of, Father God, the fall of Adam. You restored us back unto yourself. Father, help this teaching to become a revelation in people's hearts, to transform how they think, what they say, what they do, and to recognize, Father God, that everything hinges upon you and your word and how that connects to who we are as people of God. And we thank you for it. And it's in Jesus' name so we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.